As a small streamer, I too have dealt with the same problem other small streamers deal with, and that's dropping frames. The amount of stress that I went through to try to get this issue resolved is just unhealthy. We moved into this apartment, I want to say last December, and the health of the streams were perfectly fine the first couple of months. Then all of a sudden, I was dropping frames and my streams became unwatchable. I did what any rational streamer would do and that surfed the internet for potential solutions and unfortunately not a single one of them worked. I felt like my back was up against the wall until I tried something unconventional and this method actually solve the problem. I don't think this is a method that has been found or at least hasn't been brought to light. And so I wanted to bring this method to your attention so that way you guys can also solve the frame dropping issues potentially. What's up guys, my name is Giago, put it together and it is pronounced Gigo. And today we're gonna to talk about some of the general troubleshooting methods applied to solve dropping frames, what role hardware in your computer actually plays to that, some of the tests I've had to run to try to find the root of the problem, and then finally finding the root of the problem and getting it solved. But before I get into it, I wanna invite you guys over to my Twitch channel, link in the description below. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time. So if you guys feel like I might've missed something or if you guys wanna to add to the conversation, feel free to hit the link, jump in the chat, or if you want, you can uh, drop a comment in the comment section below and uh, subscribe. So let's tackle this problem using basic troubleshooting methods first. You're live, you're having a good time, it's all good vibes until you realize that you're dropping frames. The first thing anybody recommends that you do is reducing the output quality of the stream. So if you're streaming at 1080p at 60 frames per second, reduce that down to 720p and 30 frames per second. And what this basically do is, or does do? What this basically does is this reduces the workload happening on the computer as well as the network. Now, obviously nobody likes a low quality stream. However, nobody will give you a time of day if they go to your channel and all they see is buffering. So what you're basically doing is, is you're choosing one of two paths and you're trying to figure out which is the lesser evil. If you're still experiencing a problem, the next thing you wanna do is changing the encoder. Now this option is only available to those that have an Nvidia graphics card just because of the way that the card is built. They essentially built this hardware to have designated resources specifically for encoding. So if this doesn't pertain to you, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, then feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, stick around. So if this does apply to you, you basically want to go into your OBS settings, change the encoder from X264 to NVIC or vice versa. So what this basically does is it reallocates the workload from one component of the PC to another, alleviating any pressure that could be causing any potential bottlenecks in the hardware. A little more on that a little bit later. And if that doesn't resolve the issue, try reducing the bit rate of your stream. Twitch allows a max rate of 6,000 kilobytes per second. And honestly, the lowest you could probably go is 2,500. If you have to go anything lower than that, then you may have to resort to financial solutions such as upgrading your internet or getting a technician out to your home. Again, more on that later. Remember when I mentioned the, the word bottleneck, th this word here? Yeah, so basically if you're experiencing high CPU and GPU utilization, that's what that is. That's what bottlenecking is. If this is happening, then there's a very good chance that you might just need a new CPU to support your GPU. The reason why I mentioned that there's a chance that you might need a new CPU is because everything that I've mentioned so far is supposed to help offset some of the workload on the CPU. So if you've done everything that I've mentioned and you're still experiencing high utilization, there you go. Another odd thing that I that I was told that you could try, and, and I say it's odd because it, it doesn't seem like it does much, is checking the temperature of your computer. Now, if the temperature is too high for your computer, yeah, it's true. There's a chance that your computer is not performing at its best. And so what you could do is you can either upgrade its cooling mechanics, like getting a better fan, or if you have a water cooling uh, PC, try, you know, refreshing that. I don't think refreshing is the best phrase. I guess you could say renew, renew it. We'll say renew it, replace it, either which way something needs to be done to it. Now, if you wanna go the less financially burdened route, what you can do is you can do what I did and I got a nifty air in the can and I blew off all the dust in the fan and there was a lot of dust. But above all else, these two troubleshooting methods are rarely going to be the actual problem. Anybody who streams, let alone anybody who games are already fully aware and know what kind of equipment they need to do to be able to do these things. And so, 
these are just things that I'm just kind of mentioning for your sake in case you want to try it out. But now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. If you've done everything that I've mentioned so far and you're still experiencing problems, then it's probably about time to start checking your internet speed and the bandwidth connection between you and Twitch's servers. I'm assuming today we should all know how to check our internet speed. In case you don't know, just simply Google you know, internet speed test and you can perform the speed test. And what you're basically looking for is you wanna, you wanna check your upload speed. Ideally, you want that to be five megabytes at its lowest or higher. Ideally, 10 megabytes, but up to you. To check your bandwidth though, it's, it's a bit of a different story. To check your Twitch server bandwidth, you're gonna need to download this Twitch test program that you could find linked in the description below. This program is super easy to use. After you finish downloading it, you basically wanna launch the file and then run the Twitch test program. You wanna set the test duration to 30 seconds and then select the servers that are closest to you. There are three things that you need to look out for in this test. Your bandwidth, the RTT, which I forgot what it st stood for. I think it's like response time and the quality. You want your bandwidth to be at least 5,000 or above. So if you're seeing 5,000 or above, you're pretty good there. You want your RTT to be as low as possible. This basically measures how fast information is being sent from your home to the server and back. And then you want your quality to, uh, to that server to be at least 80 from what I was told. If all of these things check out and you're still experiencing problems, the next thing you want to do is actually get in contact with your ISP, which is your internet service provider. Now this may sound frivolous, but they can actually perform a second kind of test that we don't realistically have access to as consumers. Now I'm not entirely sure if every ISP does this, but what I do know is Comcast does. And I've also recently learned that Comcast isn't the best for streaming, unfortunately. But nonetheless, here's this information. The ISPs basically have a second test that checks the connectivity between the network in your home, physically your, your space you're building, the port that's on your wall, to wherever their main box is that they usually send technicians out to do some maintenance work. It is in this test that they can see if there's any latency issue between downstream and upstream. And the most important piece of information in this test is upstream. If they notice that there's an issue with this upstream, then that is essentially the root of the problem as to why you're dropping frames despite the fact that you should be having great quality internet and a great performing pc at this point this is pretty much out of your hands until you tell them hey i'm paying to get this service and i'm not getting this service so i need to get this fixed and they'll usually do one of two things the first thing that they want to do is they're going to send a technician to your home and what this technician will do is they'll do everything that i've pretty much mentioned to you in terms of what the isps take care of and they'll do one of two things again They'll either try to maintenance the main box and see if they can try to restore the upstream flow and then check the test again on their own devices to see if it worked. And if it didn't work, then they'll install the second step, which is the amplifier. And what this basically does is it amplifies the connection between your actual building or your actual unit, if you live in an apartment, to the, wherever their main box is, however you want to describe that and see if that'll restore the connectivity. Now the test on hand will show that it does improve the quality of the upstream and downstream, but what you wanna let them know is you're gonna test it out for at least a week and then you'll let them know uh, what the result of that will be. Now, if you're like me and that resolution didn't work, then you're gonna reach out to them again and tell them, hey, it didn't work. At this point, I've become a pest and a nuisance to them and they're going to do whatever it is they've done on their end wirelessly or sending a maintenance guy out to try to resolve the issue in the area. And then they'll send you a random message saying, hey, we resolved the issue. Now, as, lo as weird as it sounds, because this solution is completely almost out of your control, all it is is you complaining to your internet service provider, that complaint actually fixed the problem. Whatever the problem was between my actual unit and their main box or whatever you want to call it, they took the time out of whatever busy schedule that their guys have, met, uh, have had and they actually resolved the problem and I'm no longer dropping frames. I can't remember the last time I dropped the frame. So I invested a lot of time and energy to try to get this problem resolved because I really wanted to continue the high quality performance that I was experiencing and we were experiencing an amazing growth and unfortunately that problem cost me a a lot of growth opportunities. As a matter of fact, that problem led to a massive decline because again, nobody wants to see a buffering stream. Hey, uh, future Gigo here. 
While I was editing this video, I noticed that I kept looking at this bottom right corner and I to be quite honest, I have absolutely no no idea why. I have it I have a theory and uh, it's cuz I have I have this other camera that hangs out in this corner as well. There it goes. But um I think that I forgot to look at this angle and I started looking at that angle. So just kind of ignore ignore that. Uh, just uh, yeah, just ignore it. But I was absolutely thrilled and happy to get this problem resolved and I was able to continue working on the performance of the stream again. And with that being said, I hope this video has proved so much value to you guys, especially for those of you guys that have tried so many different methods to get this resolved. If you guys feel like I might have left anything out or if you need any kind of clarifications, feel free to drop down to my Twitch link in the description below and hop in chat. I'd be more than happy to express or explain anything that I might have missed out. I would also greatly appreciate if you guys hit the like button. That will help me out with the YouTube algorithm and it'll help put this video in front of other people that are looking for similar information. And also, if you guys want to see more content like this, feel free to hit the subscribe. If you guys hit the subscribe, it'll help me see you in the next one. I'm a genius. You're just upset because I'm on the nose. I'm right on the money. I don't think a woman has another ovary. You're the one over here like, oh, we got a right ovary in our ovary. I think he wants you to ask Buttercup about her ovary. <laughs>